What's going on guys? Today is March 9th. It's the first day of my spring break and it's my birthday. So needless to say, things are about to get pretty crazy. So have any of you guys worn the same shirt two days in a row because no one you knew saw you wear it? So have any of you guys worn the same shirt three days in a row because no one you knew saw you wear it? Alright guys, we are back in the gym with a pull hypertrophy workout. So I may have touched on it briefly in past videos, but the program I'm running now is my own pull push legs repeat program. And so it's a daily undulated program, which means that each day is different, whether it's different exercises or different rep schemes. So there's a pull push legs A and a pull push legs B. And so this is pull A, which is hypertrophy based. So we're cutting down the rest time to a minute and a half to two minutes. We're upping the reps to, you know, eight to 12. And we're also focusing on controlling the eccentric or the negative portion of the rep. And then on the pull B day, we're really just focusing on getting the weight up. And we're taking longer rests, you know, making sure we can complete all our reps and all our sets with the desired weight. And so this is actually my first day back in the gym after, I think it was about four days off, which is probably the longest time I've been out of the gym since I've started lifting. I don't think I've taken more than two days in a row off. And I was pretty under the weather. So my workouts had started going pretty poorly and it was kind of an indication that it was time for me to deload. I think I've been going about 10 to 12 weeks without any sort of you know time off or deload and so I was really feeling you know my recovery just wasn't there and I was going into the gym tired and sore so I knew it was about time for a deload and so right as that time came around I ended up getting sick which you know when you're in the overreaching phase your immune system kind of takes a hit so it makes you more susceptible for injury or you know sickness and so hopefully you guys can't hear my congestion in the voiceover but as most of you guys probably know, the first day back in the gym is always pretty rough. My strength was actually still there, but my endurance took a hit. So, for instance, I was able to hit my desired weight and reps on the first set, but then the subsequent sets just took a hit. For instance, back a couple exercises ago on those seal rows, I think I did, you know, 12, 12, 10 the previous week, and then this week I did like... 12 10 5 and so my endurance was just shot so like I mentioned earlier on these hypertrophy days I really try to keep the rest time lower which I feel like I've been letting get away from me recently so today I was really focusing on staying you know within that minute and a half two minute range just because there actually is you know scientific research to back up the benefit of you know that minute and a half to two minute rest time when it comes to you know hypertrophy work for high reps so there's different mechanisms that hypertrophy can uh, can occur through there's you know metabolic damage there's actual mechanical tension you know that causes muscle damage and so that's kind of what I'm basing and there's there's a couple other ones but I'm kind of basing my undulating periodization 
on those two mechanisms. So the hypertrophy day is working on metabolic damage, which means higher reps, lower rest time. And then also I'm trying to control the negative, although it's not very apparent today. I think that's just because my, it was my first day back and my head just wasn't quite in the game. Plus my endurance was so bad as it is. But typically what I try to do on certain exercises on the hypertrophy day is do a slow negative. So I'll do the concentric or the up portion of the lift as fast as I can, as explosively as I can. But then I try to lower the weight in a anywhere from a two to four second negative. This really helps my mind muscle connection and really keep the tension on the desired muscle. So sometimes when you're lifting, say like bench press, you end up not doing or you end up using muscles you're not intending to just because you know you can't really feel them contracting or you have certain body parts that overpower. For instance, I have a couple friends who their shoulders greatly overpower their chest on bench press. And so if they kind of leave it up to their body to default to its strongest position, it's going to put all the load on their shoulders when you can kind of actively shift the tension onto a desired muscle and you can really feel and control this if you're doing a slow negative. So kind of use lighter weight, try to get the tension on the correct muscle and then increase the weight. And that's something that a lot of people don't do is they try to, you know, ego lift, throw up as much weight as they can, but they end up not hitting the desired muscles or just not hitting them optimally. So use a lighter weight until you develop that, you know, mind muscle connection or even, you know, with power lifts, use the lighter weight to develop that CNS, you know, neural connection or the neural efficiency rather of the lift, drill in the motor control and then start increasing the weight. And I'm trying to put it in context of both powerlifting and bodybuilding because I know I have people who you know are, are interested in both. I have some people strictly powerlifting watch this channel and some people may be strictly interested in aesthetics. So hopefully I can kind of put in a range of both because certain techniques will carry over to both. But the video is winding down. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up rating. That helps me out greatly. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button. You'll be notified when I upload future videos. But in the meantime, thanks for watching and have a great day.